Let's get across the advisory now and how to get uh, to do a quick financial health check and key things you should be looking at. Uh, joining us now, Glenn Hare, co-founder of Fox & Hare Financial Advice. Glenn, welcome to Ausbiz. Good to catch up with you. All right. Oh, well, let's start then why you need to do a financial health check. Um, although money may not always be the most important thing, um, it so certainly is a key pillar and driver in terms of enabling us to live the life that we aspire to. So um, what we often observe is that life can get in the way of, you know, really taking a deep dive and, and understanding our current financial position, but also taking a proactive approach when it comes to managing our, our, our overall financial position. Uh, and, and the reality is, if we do want to buy our first home, start a family, start generating a passive income, potentially retire early, we need to be proactive in terms of what we're doing. Okay, so um, what does that entail then when you're doing that, that financial checkup? Yeah, great question, Andrew. So uh, I think about our, our member base and, and where that starts. The first is always around cash flow. So cash flow reigns supreme when it comes to uh, a financial health check. It can be, it's actually quite alarming how many Aussies have no idea what their, where their income is going on a month by month basis. And, and that can be quite, quite overwhelming. And, and it's often that this, this cohort that, that aren't across the day to day cash flow that are the first to you know say i can't buy a home or um you know i can't you know i can't start investing or i'm not sure if i'll ever be able to achieve financial freedom and you know i'm not not in denial about the fact that there's certainly some challenges out there around you know if, if your income isn't in keeping up with inflation then obviously the cost of living is is, is taking uh, taking its toll but for those cohort that um, are you know earning reasonable money and and not managing it proactively that is going to have a detrimental impact on what their future state looks like so in its simplest form Andrew from a cash flow perspective it's really about understanding how much is coming in how much is going out and what's the difference between the two? Because that's the magic number. That number that you have left over, that disposable amount on a monthly basis or fortnightly, whatever your pay cycle is, that is what's going to determine when you can retire, when you can buy that first property, when you can move down to a four-day work week. Um, so your cash flow is certainly, certainly where we start. Well, just in terms <laughs> of retirement too, Glenn, how important it is to get across your super because... So many people, and it's a natural thing to do, particularly when you set it up, when you're young, you're just beginning your job. It, it's a set yeah. and forget. You just don't look at it. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, yeah really, good, really good call out. And, and it's really interesting. So reflecting on our member base, our member base is, so the average age of our member is 34. So trying to get someone in their 20s and 30s engaged with their super is very, very challenging. Um, and statistically, most people don't actually see a financial advisor until they're about five to 10 years from retirement. And the reason they do that, Andrew, is because they get to a point and they go see an advisor and they say, hey, here's my super. Don't know what it's done for the last 40 years, but can I retire? And if I do, what's what's that going to look like? Whereas if we can have conversations, you know, for, with someone in their 20s, in their 30s, even in their 40s, but arguably just sooner rather than later, we can make sure that the money that your employer is putting into your super fund every single month is working as hard as possible to enable you to live, um, you know, have that comfortable retirement that you, you may aspire to. You know, the super system isn't designed to give you a lavish lifestyle in retirement. It's designed to meet your basic needs. But if you envisage, you know, still going out a couple of times a week, you know, the, the, you know, the, the overseas trips, um, maybe once, twice or every, every second year, then you've, you've got to be proactive. And again, the sooner, the sooner, the better. So that's a really, um, really good um, quick win from, from an investment perspective when thinking about our health check. Even if you haven't delved into um, you know, the stock market from a personal perspective, arguably your super fund is already invested in the stock market. So it's important that you understand performance and fees and things like that. Yeah, well, I mean, you're yeah, dead well, right in that we're all investors, um, be it passive uh, through our super yeah. funds. Or maybe actively, at what point, Glenn, can you advise people in terms of if they do have spare cash, what they should be doing with it? I mean, we know cost of living is front and centre at the moment. So many households yep. struggling. 
Um, at yep. what point can you comfortably say, I've got enough cash aside, I can actually invest that? Um, I mean, if you've got any amount of disposable income on a monthly basis, and what I mean by disposable income, so your income and then your bills are taken care of, regardless of what that figure is, you should be making a proactive decision around that. And that could be as simple as making sure it's in a high interest savings account, or that could be starting a regular investment strategy to your comment earlier around super, that could be making additional contributions to super, um, which is you know, a really, really tax effective environment. So proactivity is key here. And I'm really conscious that, although I might be a numbers man, my numbers isn't, isn't everyone's jam. Um, and if it's not, it's important that you do consider you know, what the right step forward is you. So rather than winging it, um, potentially look at seeking um, you know, professional advice. And, and that doesn't necessarily have to be fox and hare, although I'd love it if it was. But, you know, having having someone that really understands, um, I guess, the financial markets and, you know, tax and, and insurances and, and all of those different components in your corner is, is going to result in a better outcome. No different to mm. if you had a PT standing next to you at the gym, you're probably going to do a few more burpees than you otherwise would. Yeah, that's, that's uh, a, a good comparison right there. So, Glenn, what about the timing then? Um, do you need to have a sort of financial checkup in, at those key life moments such mm-hmm. as, well, as I mentioned, you get a job for the first time, maybe yeah. you get married, you have a child, um, and yeah. they're all going to obviously affect uh, or have financial implications for you? Yeah, it, yeah, great question. And it's something that, um, again, finances is one of those things that's quite easy to put on the back burner. So in, in our observation, there has always been a trigger to, um, I guess, seek advice. And, and also for those that are looking to, to do a financial health check, there's, there's arguably probably a trigger. And a lot of those are, yeah, for getting a new job, getting a pay rise, getting a bonus, um, you know, buying a house, starting a family, you know, so you're moving closer to, to retirement. Uh, so, you know, the, in terms of a financial health check, they're, they're really good milestones or at least at a bare minimum once a year. So even myself and my partner at the beginning of every year, we sit down and we go, OK, well, what does life look like? What does success look like from a life perspective? What do we want to achieve this year? And then we work backwards from that to then understand, OK, from a financial perspective, how do we align how we're managing our, our household finances? in line with the goals that we've agreed that we'll be driving towards this year. And then each year we reflect on that and go, what did we do? What did we not do? Um, and that's a really good exercise to make sure that we are heading in the direction that we want to. 